So you've been eating super clean. You're following your diet the exact way that you're supposed to, but you feel like you're holding a bunch of water. You're retaining water. You feel puffy. In fact, you feel more puffy now than you did when you were eating sloppy. Well, there could be a correlation with your stress. You see, stress does cause you to retain water. And honestly, it's something that I used to battle with. I'd be like, okay, my diet is on point. Why am I feeling like I'm puffier in my face? I feel like you feel like you're gaining fat. In reality, it's water. And you have to look at your other factors in life. If you're stressed out, you might not be gaining fat, but you could very well be holding water. It's like why when you travel, you hold water. So I'll go through the whole process of why this occurs, and then I'll give you some solutions towards the end of this video that can help you get over this little puffy hump, if we want to call it that. We've got new videos coming out almost every single day, so please go ahead and hit that red subscribe button, and then please hit that bell icon to turn on notifications. You never miss a beat. Always know when I go live or post a new video. I also want to make sure after you watch this video that you check out Thrive Market down in the description below. So I've actually been able to create a hormone optimization kit with Thrive. What that means is I've put together my groceries that I think are best for hormone optimization and literally been able to put it into like a grocery box. So Thrive Market makes it so you can get your groceries delivered right to your doorstep. Don't have to go to the grocery store, you can just do online shopping and make it easy. But the cool thing is I've got a good relationship with them, so I've made a keto box, I've made a fasting box, and I've even made a hormone optimization box, which works directly in line with the stuff we're talking about today. So after this video, just do me a favor and check them out just for your own good. All right, let's go ahead and talk about what's happening inside your body when you get stressed out as far as water retention goes. So first off, when you get stressed out, your hypothalamus releases something known as corticotropin-releasing hormone. This corticotropin-releasing hormone then acts upon the pituitary gland to release adrenocorticotropin hormone. Now, just like the name implies, adrenocorticotropin, the adrenocorticotropin hormone acts upon the adrenals to stimulate glucocorticoid production. Glucocorticoids are gonna be things like cortisol, and we're gonna talk about some of the catecholamines like adrenaline, epinephrine, you name it. Now, that's not the end of it. It doesn't stop there. You see. When we're stressed out and cortisol releases, we also have a release of what's called aldosterone. Now it's the job of aldosterone to regulate sodium and potassium balance within the body. But when our aldosterone levels go high, it causes our body to excrete potassium and retain sodium. So when aldosterone is high because cortisol is high, we hold on to sodium, which therefore causes us to hold on to water. But it goes a lot deeper than that. Because we're losing the potassium, it gets a lot harder for us to be able to find our mineral balance again. Stress, for some reason, causes this sodium retention to occur. But it doesn't stop there. There's something known as the ADH, or antidiuretic hormone, or vasopressin. Okay, ADH does a similar thing to aldosterone, except it works upon water specifically. You see, our kidneys are interesting. You would think that our kidneys are permeable to water, right? Because water flows into them and then flows out. But they're actually not, especially when it comes down to reabsorption. So ADH, this antidiuretic hormone, is responsible for the kidneys releasing water back into the system. What it does is it makes a specific part of the kidneys water permeable. So what happens is when ADH is high, the kidneys are now allowed to let water reabsorb back into our body rather than force it to the bladder to be excreted. So ADH makes it so we hold water specifically, whereas aldosterone makes it so we hold sodium, but along with sodium also comes water. So when the two of them are working together, it's a huge problem because not only are we retaining sodium, but we're also retaining water and the kidneys aren't forcing the expelling of that water because again, ADH is making us hold on to it. So without this fluid balance, we're in a world of hurt and that can make us more stressed out and cause more cortisol. And what have we learned about cortisol? Along with a cortisol release comes an aldosterone release. But now we're finding that along with an aldosterone release generally comes an ADH or vasopressin release. Oh man, like we're totally like just screwed here, right? Then there's a study that was published in the Neuroscience and Biobehavioral Review Journal that found that there absolutely is a link between stress and the angiotensin aldosterone pathway. Okay, so what that means again is there was a solid link. When someone is stressed out, they have that angiotensin pathway that releases aldosterone that makes us retain water, okay? But then there's another study. So the British Journal of Plastic Surgery found that when we had an increase in cortisol, we did actually have an increase in ADH. So a direct link. Now this study was done on burn patients, so it's interesting. They looked at burn patients, they knew their cortisol levels were going to be high, but they wanted to see, was there an increase when cortisol went up along with ADH? And sure enough, there was. So we now know that stress is what's making you puffy. 
you're fasting, you're doing keto, you're doing everything right, but then all of a sudden you're holding on to water and it's a bummer. Well, what can you do? Okay, first thing, when it comes to diuretics, it's okay to use them, but I recommend using like dandelion root over other types of diuretics. Okay, over-the-counter diuretics can be pretty brutal. Dandelion root, the nice thing about it, it's already three times higher in potassium than any other like botanical diuretics. So you're already replacing the potassium. It's important to know with a diuretic that you have to have that potassium or you have to at least be potassium sparing. A lot of pharmaceutical diuretics are not potassium sparing, like Lasix, for example. When you take Lasix, you're dropping water, sodium, and potassium, causing you to really go into some cramps. Like if you were to overdose on Lasix, you could cramp your heart, dangerous stuff. Whereas dandelion root is a diuretic that replaces potassium at the same time as working upon aldosterone. So it ends up working in a nice way. The other thing we have to look at with dandelion is also an anti-inflammatory. So reducing uh, tumor necrosis factor one alpha, reducing interleukin six, which is gonna help you with that water retention at a different cellular level. Okay, the next thing we have to look at is hibiscus or roselle tea. Okay, hibiscus tea and roselle tea have powerful effects on working upon the ADH specifically. So it acts upon specific vascular relaxation. So it opens up the blood vessels so blood and water can get to where it needs to go a little bit easier so your body doesn't have to hold on to it as much. Let's also increase urine production by 48%. So if you're retaining a lot of sodium, you do need to increase your urine output so that you can replace the right minerals. So whenever you do take a diuretic or drink some kind of diuretic tea, it's important that you replace the minerals that you are losing. All you're trying to do is kickstart the process of the kidneys expelling water. You're not trying to just get rid of water and then leave it. Otherwise, you're gonna end up in a complete weird fluid balance that's gonna trigger more cortisol. So whatever you excrete, you replace, okay? You're just trying to lose the water. You're not trying to lose the minerals. Lose the water, bring the minerals back, and your body will get back to homeostasis. It's very important. Lastly is a little bit of caffeine. Don't be afraid of caffeine. Okay, caffeine has a direct effect on ADH, okay, on the antidiuretic hormone. So a little bit of caffeine, up to like 80 to 100 milligrams used as a diuretic is usually pretty strong. Usually in most over-the-counter meds, you're gonna find things like um, caffeine anhydrous in like 200 to 300 milligram. I don't even think you need that much. And again, caffeine's kind of the last choice on this. The hibiscus, roselle tea, and the dandelion root, usually one or the other is exactly what you need in conjunction with magnesium, sodium, and potassium coming in at just a modest level. Just take a little bit, 99 milligrams of potassium, something like that, a couple hundred milligrams of magnesium, and a little bit of salt, like Redmond Real Salt or Pink Himalayan Salt. So hopefully this gets you through this little puffy hump that we have to get through. As always, keep it locked in here on my channel, and I'll see you in the next video.